right, welcome back. Pay no attention to the cookies uh, on the table behind me there. And let's get back into Matthew chapter 26. We're right at that place when uh, Jesus is at the home of uh, Simon the leper, according to Matthew 26 and verse number six, an unnamed woman, according to Matthew, comes in and pours this very expensive ointment on Jesus's head and the disciples, uh, complain about it. Uh, verse number eight, they were indignant when they saw this and they said, why this waste? For this perfume might have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. So we've covered all that. And uh, this is new now, verse number 10, Matthew 26, 10. But Jesus, aware of this, said to them, why do you bother the woman? For she has done a good deed to me. For the, Listen to this. For the poor you have with you always but you do not always have me. Now let's pause and think about that for a second. Uh, if Jesus wasn't God, then this statement right here would indicate that he had an, an ego that was completely out of control. And he does not deserve to be worshiped, rather he deserves to be despised and, and spat upon because he thought of himself as, as being so much more valuable that it was worth pouring this ointment upon him at the expense of many poor people who could have been helped. I mean, listen to that statement again, for the poor you have with you always, but you do not always have me verse number 11 of Matthew chapter 26. So you can see, uh, I mean, Jesus can say that and he can get away with it and, and we can find no fault in him if he is God because God, you know, if you took, if you took God and, and, and put him in a balance and put God on this side and put all of humanity on this side and that scale valued the worth of both sides of, of the scale, well, you know, this side of the scale would drop like a, a, a stone and all the people on this side, all of humanity for all time would fly off at the speed of light because their relative value compared to God's relative value, they have no value at all. <laughs> right? Right. And so, you know, God can say these things about himself, like Jesus said about himself right here, you don't always have me and so I'm worth it to pour this expensive ointment on my, my head. He can say it without any sense of pride. It's impossible for God to think too highly of himself, right? I mean, if for him to say, I'm the greatest, well, that's, that's just the truth. For him to say, I am awesome, that's the truth. And for him to say, I'm worth anything, that's the truth. And I'm worth everything, that's the truth. And not one little touch of pride in that because it's simply true. Whereas if you and I were to say something anywhere close to what Jesus said in the same similar situation, it would be just outrageous, outrageous. Well, some use this scripture uh, to justify not doing anything for the poor. Wait a second now. Jesus was not saying, oh, go ahead and neglect the poor because you have me. He was saying you can help the poor at any time because there will always be poor people, but you're not always going to have me. And so there was a very limited amount of time where what Jesus spoke, you know, we could apply to our lives. You could never take what Jesus said then and say, yeah, see, you know, she said you always have the poor, so we'll always have the poor, so we'll get around to helping them someday. No, reverse yourself back up into Matthew chapter 25 there and read what we read about the future judgment of the sheep and goats and see if that you can you know, adjust your thinking about uh, what we ought to be doing and how our lives ought to be involved with the poor because our very eternal destiny is tied in with our relationship with the poor, the least of these right now. Okay, but amazing, amazing statement by Jesus. And if Jesus wasn't God, he did a great job at playing the part perfectly. All right, so he was God. Just face up to it, he was God. He deserves worship and praise. He let people worship him, didn't he? Sure he did. You know, anyone who wasn't God who would allow that wouldn't be a good person. That person would be an evil, wicked person. And then that's one reason why, you know, if you're telling someone about Jesus and they say, well, yeah, I believe Jesus was a great moral leader and a good person and so forth and a worthy example for us to follow. And he said a lot of good things, but I don't believe he was the son of God. That's a good time to remind those types of people that the historical record that we have doesn't leave any possibility that Jesus was just a good man or a great moral leader. People who allow other people to worship them 
people who allow other people to die for them and to give up their lives and their livelihoods and their families and pay the ultimate price in their devotion to them, you know, they're not good people. Right? Jesus was either the, a, a terrible deceiver, a wicked deceiver, or he was a lunatic, you know, a nut out of his mind who believed these nonsensical things that, that he was saying about himself, or the only other possibility, the third one is, he was who he claimed to be. He was Lord God Almighty. And here's just one more example of him playing the part perfectly, right? Lord, liar, or lunatic. Those are the only three choices for who Jesus was. There's no other choices. He was he's, no possibility. He was just a good moral leader or a great religious figure. No, sir. No, ma'am. All right, so you keep on going here, and, and uh, he, he, he explains another reason why this woman has done a good thing. For uh, verse, number, verse number 12, For when she poured this perfume upon my body, she did it to prepare me for burial. I don't know how, again, I'm just amazed Jesus is even talking at this point in time, because he, he knows what's going to be happening to him. For I say to you, wherever this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done shall also be spoken of in memory of her. Well, did that come to pass? Well, where in the world are you right now when the gospel is being spoken and you're hearing right now about this wonderful deed of this woman, okay? So I told you sometime back that I was gonna show you the one time, the one case when we don't have to be concerned about the poor. If you had lived at that time, at that, you know, during those, those hours, then you didn't need to be so concerned about the poor because you had a window of opportunity to show your love specifically right to Jesus. But now we show our love to Jesus by loving the least of these because he said, when you did it to the least of these, my brethren, you did it unto me, All right? All right, good stuff. Well, we're gonna get into a really interesting character. People have a lot of questions about Judas. So I'll see you next time. Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.